Dr. Shelley Chadha oversees the World Health Organization's work on prevention of deafness and hearing loss, including advocacy for making hearing health care a priority, technical support to countries globally for development of hearing health care strategies, World Hearing Day, and the Make Listening Safe initiative. Dr. Chadha first trained as an otolaryngologist and then undertook doctoral studies in public health. She has long-standing experience in policy development for hearing care, and I'm truly honored to have the time today to talk a little bit with her. For the first question, how did the WHO become so interested in hearing loss and its prevention? Uh, thank you. Thank you for this question, and thank you for this opportunity to speak uh, through this medium today. So, you know, in, in 2017, uh, the World Health Assembly, um, the World Health Assembly is basically a big meeting. It's a big meeting where all of the ministries of health or representatives of ministries of health of the 194 countries, which are members of the United Nations system and of the World Health Organization, they, they all come together. So in 2017, when they met, um, they discussed amongst various other, numerous other issues, but they also discussed uh, the information which uh, WHO, which we had provided to them about, about hearing loss. So about the fact that uh, the number of people living with hearing loss was increasing, that this had, when unaddressed, this was having a huge impact on the lives of those who are affected, on their families, on the economy as such. Um, and the fact that it's possible to prevent and, and about its rehabilitation. So basically about the public health importance of hearing loss. So this was discussed during this World Health Assembly and uh, the member states, the countries, they adopted a resolution, um, a resolution which calls for global action on hearing care. So this uh, resolution was really the uh, what made WHO uh, act in this area because uh, it set out what are the various actions which WHO needs to take, what are the various actions which the countries need to take. So essentially this defined WHO's work in the field of hearing care. That's, it's, that's great and it's, it's areas that are so important to us at the Center for Hearing and Communication as well that it's, it's it's interesting to see how it all evolved. So in that, in that case, you would say WHO really considers hearing loss, you know, care and prevention now a, a global health issue of great importance. Absolutely, so it does. And hearing loss is a global public health issue. Um, and if you look at the rationale for it, the reason for it, this is uh, well summarized in the World Report on Hearing, which, uh, which was just launched uh, last month, actually. It feels, uh, it feels longer, but it was actually just uh, about six weeks back, not even that. Um, so this, and, and the reason there is outlined very clearly, supported, of course, by data and, and evidence and numbers. So currently we estimate that nearly 20% of the world's population has some degree of hearing loss. And over 5% of the population, so uh, this is about uh, 400 and nearly 450 million people, they require rehabilitation services, hearing rehabilitation services. And this number is growing. It's growing at a fairly rapid pace. And uh, what projections state is that by 2050, nearly a fourth of the world's population would have some degree of hearing loss and about 700 million people would require hearing rehabilitation services. So what we also see, um, as you know well, is that many of the causes which lead to hearing loss are preventable, both in children, whether it's infections in the ear or infections like rubella or other factors, but also then in adults, uh, noise exposure, exposure to loud sounds, uh, use of ototoxic medicines and chemicals. So these are factors which can be prevented. So that's why uh, the focus in this area. 
and that when hearing loss does occur, when, when people have hearing loss, uh, it can be addressed. We have interventions. So we have in this field, um, you know, a wide variety, a range of interventions which can fit the needs of the different people, whether it's a child or an adult or with mild or uh, severe hearing loss or profound hearing loss. So there are so many interventions which are available. Um, people can use sign language, they can use cochlear implants. So we do have interventions and we, these interventions are of proven efficacy. Millions of people are benefiting from these already. But the reason why this is a global public health issue is because access to these interventions is neither universal nor is it equitable. So that is the reason why it becomes a public health issue because we need public health action to ensure that all people who need ear and hearing care services, they can receive these interventions and without facing financial hardships. So that is the uh, aim of making it a global public health issue. Right, and, and globally, it's the issues about access are not just limited to you know, other countries around the world. In the United States, there are, there are you know, hundreds of thousands of people that don't have access to the hearing health care that's so easy you know, for some people to get. So it's exciting that WHO is taking this on. You talk about prevention, and especially um, in light of the relationship and the development of International Noise Awareness Day, could you talk a little bit about the Safe Listening Project and, you know, if that was designed initially for, you know, for children as they grow or adults as, as well, and, and how you see that being of benefit? Yeah, thanks, Laurie. It's, uh, it's, it's a project very close to my heart, personally. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in 2015, we estimated, when I say we, I mean WHO, of course, uh, and when I say estimated, I mean that uh, based on review of literature and meta-analysis, so, so um, an evidence-based estimate was made that over a billion young people, and uh, when we are talking about this billion, they are typically between the ages of 12 to 35 years, so really young people, um, they are, and, and often unknowingly, they're putting their hearing at risk simply by enjoying one of life's simple pleasures. So, you know, listening to music, which we all love to listen to. Um, <clears throat> so given the fact that hearing loss is already on the rising trend, we have projections for 2050, the fact that this additional risk poses a, a big challenge. We are looking at a young population potentially at risk of hearing loss. So certainly the focus of this uh, initiative, which was then launched in 2015 to address this uh, risk, has been, is on, on this target population, on, the, on adolescents and young adults. Um, but at its heart, it's not really an initiative only for young people. We do target them, um, and I'll tell you why we target them. But it is the purpose of this initiative is that people at all ages should be able to enjoy listening to whatever it is they want to listen to, to whatever music or whatever audiovisual content they enjoy listening to, but without putting their hearing at risk. So the target is really um, adolescents and young adults, but the reason for this target is because we want to see this impact across the life course, not just when they are um, adolescents and young adults, but extending into their uh, uh, senior years, you could say. Um, so just to give a little bit, if uh, we have time about the initiative, so this initiative, it has at its heart, um, what are we trying to do through this? We are trying to change the way people listen to their music. So we are trying to change listening behaviors in this target group. So that, that is a, a daunting and challenging <laughs> task indeed. Um, and how we are doing it is on, well, firstly, to through raising awareness, of course, 
um, through evidence-based information, which is uh, packaged in an accessible and, and an appropriate, culturally appropriate manner. But then also, uh, you know, behavior change has many components. So we are working also with experts in behavior change in, in this respect, but also we are trying to create an environment that facilitates safe listening behavior. And this environment we are trying to create through uh, developing certain recommendations, certain regulations, certain frameworks. So <clears throat> to give you an example, in 2019, we launched um, a set of recommendations for devices for, well, our uh, smartphones and, and other tablets and so on, which we used to listen, um, which now we use for listening to music very often. So the purpose of uh, these set of recommendations and what they translate into are like uh, safe listening apps, which are available on some of the devices. So they're already available and they can be used by people when they have a raised awareness. They can use these apps to, to moderate their own listening behaviors, to monitor and moderate their own listening behaviors. Similarly, now we are working on, uh, on the piece of uh, venues, so uh, concerts, uh, bars, discos, and so on. So what kind of features should be there in order to promote safe listening practices and behaviors? So that is the purpose of this initiative. And I, we have a limited time, but anybody who's interested to know more about this can find out on, on our website by just searching Make Listening Safe. And we can give that we can give that resource um, out to people because I would encourage everybody to look at it. Um, it's got a lot of really good information. So, to conclude, if you could give the general public who might not read the entire um, the entire document and program three tips in terms of prevention of their hearing loss due to noise, what might they be? So, I would say firstly to turn it down. So, I'm sure that. Uh, you know, we all want to enjoy listening to our favorite piece of music for a long, long time, forever. Uh, but we know that our hearing is really, it, it is fragile. And once it is affected, it's not going to naturally come back. So once uh, loud sounds or, or noise affects our hearing, it's gone forever. And we can have, uh, well, hearing aids and things to, to kind of help us, but uh, we'd rather protect the natural thing, which uh, there is really no substitute for. So the first uh, message is turn it down and to help you to do that, to know, well, how much is okay? How much is not okay? I'm listening. Am I listening? Fine. You can use apps which are built into many of the phones now. So, so check if you're a phone actually has that uh, uh, hearing help uh, kind of application. Um, and if it doesn't, you there are apps you can download for including apps uh, which are available for free or some are paid uh, to monitor your listening behavior. So turn it down and monitor your listening behavior. Second uh, message would be to protect your ears and your hearing when you can't turn it down. So for example, if you're in a noisy sports arena or in a, in a bar, in a gym, you can still protect your ears with a pair of earplugs. So if you visit these places regularly, invest in a, in a pair of good uh, earplugs. And if you go occasionally or you do not want to wish to make that investment, use the uh, regular, you know, available earplugs. So th they will help to cut down your risk a lot. Um, and the third message that I would like to give to them is check your hearing. So there are a number of apps available, including the World Health Organization's Hear Who app, uh, but there are other apps available as well. So use a good app, which is a validated app, um, and check your hearing, monitor it regularly uh, so that you can see how you're doing in terms of your hearing. And if your hearing is not doing so well, you can take action. So those are my three top messages for the day. Those are, are perfect, perfect takeaways, um, you know, for this time and for always. Um, thank you so much for sharing, you know, all of your knowledge about this with us, with the public, and certainly at CHC, our values are so in line 
with everything you talk about that it's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you, Laurie. It was a pleasure to talk to you.